morning, everyone. Uh, it was a fabulous morning. I don't know if you got up very early, but the moon was setting. And with it, you had the sun rising. And I captured this on my mobile uh, camera, uh, where the glow of the sunrise and the golden glow of the moon sort of coincided. And I thought, brilliant day compared to Delhi, where you can barely see the sun, leave alone the moon, given the pollution that's there. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the uh, seventh edition of Business Today, Mind Rush Conclave. This, as those who have attended uh, it earlier in the early years, is our flagship event that is designed to bring together the best minds in business, economy, and policy on a common platform to discuss and debate the ideas that will shape the markets, our businesses, and organizations of tomorrow. I, our primary focus is the challenges to leadership, to understand the new complexities that have, been, that have been thrown up by an uncertain and unpredictable world, and also to celebrate and honor those who have successfully navigated the turbulent times and are now uh, be become the beacons of the future. Later this evening, we will be awarding the best CEOs in the country across 16 categories. And we are deeply honored that Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, Union Minister for Petroleum and Steel, will be delivering the keynote address and presenting the awards to the winners. Since uh, Mindrush is all about making your businesses and organizations future ready, and of course profitable, our theme this year, as Shweta mentioned, is very aptly titled, Disruption or Die. All of us know that we live in an era of tremendous disruption, change, and in which powerful global and local forces are changing the pace that we do things, changing the way we live, work, eat, play, and even party. The dramatic rise of China, India, and uh, the other emerging economies, the amazingly rapid spread of dig digital technologies, the twin challenges of uh, failing or depleting globalization and rising protectionism are now strongly impacting our business. No more, they say, that we can afford to put our, hands, uh, our heads in the sand as, as ostriches do and believe that it would not impact our businesses. No more can we afford to be insular or technology, uh, technologically challenged. If we do so, it is at our own peril and that of our businesses. These tectonic shifts, however, offer considerable new opportunities to companies, sectors, countries, and individuals that embrace them successfully. A recent uh, McKinsey study showed that those that are creating a host of new technologies have become the new superstars on the world stage who are not only boosting productivity, but they're driving prosperity in many countries. And the names are pretty familiar. I'm not going to them. But there is a downside, too, that we need to know. Those who have not been able to keep pace have also grown or fallen disproportionately and face extinction. So what these times call for is radical thinking of the way we do business, govern our country, as well as ourselves. Simply put, what does disruption mean? It could mean the disappearance of your current business models, as we have seen in the cab and uh, hotel room aggregator business. We are in an age where many repetitive jobs are disappearing, and as machines are doing them faster and better. As artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, and Internet of Things become the norm, all terminologies that we alien at one time, there is without doubt going to be even greater disruption. The truism of this age, ironically, in this new age of business, is to disrupt an industry or competitor, you have to disrupt your own business first. And this is the greatest challenge for conventional conventional or legacy businesses as they face the threat of new startups and the way they do things. I will just mention a few of the big disruptions which we are already experiencing 
and some of the ways it's impacting the future. It's a large subject, but the first among them, and we're getting very familiar to, to, to this terminology, is uh, Web 3.0. If you recall uh, 1.0, which seems so, so long back, though it's only 20 years ago, uh, was mainly company-focused, uh, where owning content was the key. Web 2.0 was community-driven, and uh, sharing content became common, and we are in that era currently. However, in Web 3.0, the next, or the already the iteration of the internet, the individual is the king, and it will be marked by consolidation of content and tremendously smart use of content. Uh, unlike, unlike current online experiences that we now have, Web 3.0 3.0 will bring in context by using artificial intelligence to filter through irrelevant information and deliver personal, specific set of results. This will be enabled by the coming of 5G, which we've talked about and the huge controversies that have marked it. And there will be another brave new world uh, where we, we will see self-driving cars, which are already being uh, tested, that could dramatically reduce road accidents, where your teleconferences, even to this day, if you're trying to do a teleconference in India, they tend to, to cut off midway and you have to redial and do it, or the, the you know, voice or the video is scratchy. That should go. And you can downla download an entire season of the Game of Thrones, which, or whichever serial you like, almost instantly. That's the kind of speed you're talking about. Along with 5G, what you would see and it's already happening, sorry, are the mind-blowing advances in the speed and level of computing. We are now talking of spatial, edge, and quantum computing. And these will be the new force multipliers that will drive what is known as Web 3.0. This will not only disrupt, but revolutionize the way we do business. All these developments are uh, leading us to an oxymoron termed mass personalization, or what is better known as the market of one. Instead of targeting the masses, businesses are realizing the true value that lies in, is in focusing on what is known as the market of one. Customers would be treated as individuals rather than as communities. And that, of course, is enabled by technology, because businesses are increasingly using personal data to glean consumer preferences and cater to specific individual needs. As we've seen, personalization at a highly individual level uh, has become truly vital. If you look at some of the sectors, retail, we're all familiar. We do it shopping uh, through the net regularly. Entertainment, healthcare, finance, and this is just to name a few sectors. It's going to impact all the key sectors that we have. And of course, with the rise of digital natives, my son is a digital native. He doesn't read the papers. Unlike me, I, I edit magazines. He never looks at it. He's constantly on the net. He's playing Fortnite. He lives his world through virtual rea reality as Alexa, where he tells Alexa to shut the lights out in the night, put the music on. These are the di new digi di digital natives that we are seeing. And instead of just geo-targeting and behavioral, uh, behavioral data analytics, that drove businesses of, of today, tomorrow's companies will now have powerful tools to gather information from individuals and turn them into focused insights to cater to their specific needs. Another buzzword in this new disruptive world is strategic automation. Termed intelligent automation, it is the combination of automation, automation and artificial intelligence uh, to automate your businesses process selectively and ensure quantum leaps in the efficiency and productivity of organizations, not to mention profitability. And another key driver of this change will be known as, or is already being called, the ubiquitous artificial intelligence, or AI. As we know, AI uh, will, in, the, in a couple of years, uh, be in all our machines, all our app applications, and all our processes, and already will impact our personal lives. Machines already surpass human performances in a range of functions, image recognition, detection of orbits, or objects, and many, much more. If you look at the new driverless cars, for instance, 
They take advantage of the huge progress in sensors, uh, machine vision, satellites, navigation, and robotics. Interestingly, uh, uh, the same McKinsey study that I quoted earlier shows that companies that are in the forefront of implementing AI are likely to increase employment rather than reduce it because of their primary focus of growth. And big tech companies that are now promoting the democratization of AI is ensuring the spread of artificial intelligence, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Intel, whether any of these companies, they are in the process of what they call democratizing, not holding back AI in any way. Of course, there are ethical issues that will thrown up, that will be thrown up, especially in our personal lives and the intrusion of our privacy, and that is something that needs to be sort out, sorted out. Uh, with the new decade barely uh, two, weeks, um, uh, two, two weeks away, uh, 2020 is expected to throw up new management mantras to deal with disruptive forces. The favorite term that is now being used is quantum innovation. Uh, and that is essentially uh, driven by bold, creative, and quantum leaps in thinking that will set uh, lucrative new paradigms that go beyond the existing models. One such quantum uh, uh, innovation is the way SpaceX thinks. It doesn't talk about building rockets uh, to launch satellites. It talks about colonizing Mars. This kind of moonshot or Mars shot thinking is what the current uh, you know, disruptive era that we live in uh, needs. <clears throat> what this also uh, demands is a new kind of leadership. Uh, it's, it's termed as innovation leadership. Uh, there is a dramatic shift away from IQ, which was the traditional metric that we used to select leaders. And this uh, IQ primarily focused on uh, the need for, pro for problem-solving skills for a leader. Recent studies show that uh, EQ, or emotional quotient, is being increasingly used to select leaders. Persons with higher EQ have the capability, they believe, to understand their own em emotions apart from others and therefore are greatly able to facilitate team spirit handle customers more effectively, deal with pain points far better, and of course, offer more effective, human-centric solutions to challenges. According to the World Economic Forum, uh, there are three, or the three essential attributes of a leader today, apart from several others, is emotional intelligence, creat cre creativity, and people management skills. All these skills is what a leader would need to possess for 2020 and beyond. And all these trends epitomize why innovation is often best when it's boldest and why companies should always ensure that big ideas are given room to grow. McKinsey studies show that there will be a disproportionately large gains for top dis disruptors and correspondingly heavy losses for those falling behind. Uh, the sessions we have put together for this Mind Rush conclave will have distinguished speakers who will be focused around this theme and will look at various industries and businesses and how they're coping with change, be it technological, business, business or operational. In the era of disruption, there is one big warning. Unless you move ahead of the times, be ahead of the times, your business, businesses will be left way behind and you will die. Uh, of course, we end the day with uh, the best CEO awards, uh, which we're awarding to CEOs that have made a difference with their companies, even in tough times. And later this evening, we would have a special session with them so that you will get an understanding of why they became the best CEOs of the year. I hope you will have a fruitful day and go back with new learnings that can be adopted or modified to your own businesses. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.